hey, thank you for coming on in and hanging out with me. Uh, this video is actually gonna live on all of my platforms. So depending on where you're watching me from, everything that I talk about as far as blog posts and whatever will be linked down below. So I appreciate you hopping on. And if we've just met, um, my name is Karen Wilson and I'm getting ready. There is five sleeps before um, I do the New York City Marathon. And some of the biggest things that I've been asked is how I'm preparing mentally, how I'm preparing physically, and how I actually do it. So I'm gonna start this video with a little bit of mental prep that I'm doing. And one of them, it, because it's kind of fun, and that's, that's why I'm doing that, is that if you're getting ready for Halloween, this might be a helpful tip for you as well. And um, because I, I had to do some gluing and like bedazzling and stuff. So mentally preparedness, I know it's going to be tough, but I also know that I'm not going to get another chance where 50,000 spectators are going to be screaming my, or no, like a million or something, spectators, something like that, are going to be saying my name. So I got these sparkly letters and they were sticky and I got them from the dollar store and they didn't really stick very well. Um, so I went through all the process of should I glue or should I, and I forgot about this lovely little thing called liquid stitch and it's just like glue. It works through humidity. It works through anything. You can put it anything on fabric. I used to use this all the time because I'm only like five one. I used to use it for my pant legs all the time and I totally forgot about this little gem. But one thing you have to be aware of is sometimes it will, depending on the fabric, it'll go through on the other side. So if you're doing like hemming or whatever, just be aware that that could come through, but it works. And I kind of dribbled a little bit on and that won't come off. And so, you know, I figure, is it toothpaste? <laughs> Is it? Oh, wow, whatever. Anyways, so I got my name. That's a mental preparedness strategy. And I did it and read shiny letters um, because to symbolize that I'm Canadian and I'm bold and I'm strong. So that brings me on to number two about the mental strategy of doing a full marathon is I always do things that bring me into um, a state of symbolism so I had to like do my hat as well and um, my hat has butterflies on it and my pace that I'm going to be doing I'm going to be running 88% of the race and then the other 12% I will be walking so my run walk ratio is one well, that's one minute for walking, three minutes for running, one minute for walking, three minutes. And so that's what the symbol is there. A butterfly, I've always loved the butterfly for uh, symbolism as, as a thing of renewal. And it's also, um, my dad passed away like 11 years ago. And whenever I see a butterfly, I think of my dad. So. This is my little way, <laughs> I won't get emotional, of bringing my dad on the course with me and uh, knowing that whenever it's tough, I got my dad with me and he's up there with God and, and, and you know, like you just, you just get through. And even symbolism of a marathon, I've, I've done one before. It was actually my six year marathon anniversary yesterday <laughs> of the last one I did. And I know there's gonna be times where there's tough, where it's tough, but again, the symbolism of the butterfly is, is every time we rebirth into something that we don't know what's coming on the other side, we become stronger, more brilliant, and free, really. Um, it's also a symbolism of, um, you know, for all my 131 um, uh, pod squad out there, you know who you are, it's, it's a symbolism of that teaching me how to really tap in to my, my body in a way that I had never seen before, so mentally and physically, and really understanding my specific DNA and how it's gonna react with this kind of 
training. And that again was a new rebirth of the physical and mental changes that I went through um, in the last year and a half through the development and and through the whole you know process of of learning about myself through that um, nutritional program. But that's not what this video is about today. So let's move on to the physical preparedness. All right. So I had mentioned before, and some of you may or may not know that um, my husband and I are in the um, opening ceremonies and how to be able to watch that and my bib number and whatnot will be, it is already on karenwilson.online on my latest blog post, but depending on where you are watching it, it will be linked below. And I'd love to hear from you if you are also um, in the marathon or um, just shoot me a message if you're interested in anything specific about this whole journey, because as you know, I will be documenting it. I'll be documenting it. A lot of it here will be on stories. Um, if you're watching from YouTube, it's actually Instagram stories. I'll link that below. And I'm doing this live on Instagram because you know what happens when you're training for a marathon that I never even really um, thought about is the amount of time <laughs> it takes for the training, for the eating, for the food prep, for the knowing what to eat, for the studying the course, for the, for all of that. And, and at one point I said to a friend, I'm like, I feel like it's consuming me. And on my run this morning, I was practicing marathon pace, which is my, you know, preferred marathon pace. I'll, I'll write a little summary about that on my um, Instagram page a little bit later. But I was thinking about that and I'm like, wait a second. No, 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 no. <laughs> the last marathon that I ran, that one I let consume me. That one I let myself think that I wasn't good enough, strong enough, fit enough, thin enough to be able to put out the effort and get a good time. <laughs> and instead of like really embracing what I had done, I became confused as to why like I was the only person in the Uberverse that gains 20 pounds when you're training for a marathon. I had no idea about cortisol. I had no idea about dieting and the restrictions that I was putting on my body, which is why I was gaining weight. So this time I did it differently. This time I did it with, with um, a projection of, of being kind to myself, body, mind, and soul, and even on, on the heels of an injury, I've learned how to really embrace the fact that I was injured, that I had to take back my expectations on a finishing time. But when I do it, I've earned it just as much as everybody else. A marathon is something that we we work with on ourselves. So this time the marathon is not consuming me. I'm consuming it. So I started visualizing, yeah, yeah, I'm like little Pac-Man girl going like this and I'm gonna consume and I'm gonna, my goal is to be very present and to really capture this, all this surrealness in. Um, another thing we do uh, to prepare, we have done to prepare, is since we're not even gonna be in the same time zone. I mean, there's all those kinds of things to think about, right? And so we've been studying the weather, but you just never know what's the weather going to be like. So I've trained in several different um, outfits, I guess you could say. And you know, like, like you've seen, I already know exactly what I'm going to wear. Um, and there's a point where we'll be waiting in the village. And it might be raining. <laughs> So what do you do when it's raining? You put a poncho on. So anything that goes into the village with you, it has to be either you know recyclable or give awayable. So I have not yet picked the jacket that I am going to donate to um, the the Goodwill in New York uh, because it will be cold. I will be sitting there for probably about three hours. We will get at the athletes 
spot at about 8.30 a.m. and my takeoff is 11, my takeoff. But in, in my biological time, that's actually my perfect running window. So I just gotta train my clock as, as we go along this week. Um, so I didn't wanna keep you too, too long on this. Um, in the opening ceremonies, like I said, everything is living on my blog. If, depending on where you're watching this, the link might be right below. Otherwise, you can find it on karenwilson.online. When I return, um, there are going to be a few little things that are going to be exciting, but I'm, I'm not looking there yet. And I appreciate each and every single one of you that have been along for this journey. Can you believe like a year has gone by? A year! Oh yes, I've also had questions on how exactly I did this and how we got, you know, because you have to qualify to get into the New York City Marathon and we didn't qualify. We bought a vacation package through Dream Travel. This guy is like flipping amazing. Um, so that's that's how we did it. And the way my husband and I, we like to, you know, if we're gonna run for something as big as a marathon, we like to be able to see new areas. And there's no better way to see a new area than, or, or to really dive deep into the culture and the neighborhoods and, and everything of a city as to run the streets. And, you know, like it's in you running with other people that have done the same type of training. The, the, they're people that know how hard it was and they had experienced the same kind of difficulties and they're right beside you experiencing, you know, sometimes the joy, sometimes the tears, sometimes the pain. And so for me, my projected time is um, anywhere between five and a half to six hours. And I embrace that. And when I come through that finish line, I'm gonna be just as proud as if I did it in two and a half. And if I did it in two and a half, wow, I will never ever forget the breakfast I had to be able to output that. <laughs> That's it. That's all I have today. Um, thank you for being here and thank you for watching this till the end. Please send me a message. Let me know that you are watching or interested and I'll be sure to um, make the stories based on the kinds of things that you want to see because I also don't want to plug up your newsfeed. And, um, and mind you, if you don't want to see it, maybe you want to mute me. <laughs> and that's okay too. No offense. I get it. I'm not everyone's cup of tea all of the time. And, um, but anyways, thank you so much. And I will see you. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye for now.